Hey, yeah, everyone, Andrew here, bringing you another video, and today we're going to be doing my Andrew Cutter Picks of the Weeks, as well as any news and updates. Now, for those of you that are new to my channel or know nothing about this video series, basically my Andrew Cutter Pick of the Week video is where I take a look at this week in DC Comics. Then I select the comic that I enjoyed the most and declare it my Andrew Cutter Pick of the Week. Now, if at any time you see a comic in this video that you would like to see or learn a little bit more of, don't worry, I did a full review of each and every single one of them, so all you have to do is go back and check out that video. In addition to that, I also do any news or updates pertaining to anything, or anything to do with my channel. So with that said, let's get into the Andrew Cutter Picks of the Weeks. Uh, this week for DC Comics, we got uh, Batman Robin number 6, Green Lantern number 6, Batgirl number 6, Deathstroke number 6, Demon Knights number 6, Suicide Squad number 6, Superboy number 6, Batwoman number 6, Penguin Pain and Prejudice issue number 5 of 5, and lastly, Huntress issue number 5 of 5. Uh, there was some pretty good comics this week. Uh, a couple of 5 out of 5s, I think. I gave uh, Demon Knights a 5 out of 5, and Batman Robin a 5 out of 5. Then I give something else. I think there was something else that got me. Uh, if it wasn't a 5 out of 5, it was a 4 to 5 out of 5. It was like a 4.5, like Batgirl or Deathstroke. There was some pretty good comics this week. Um, really enjoyed them, with the exception of Superboy, which was just an atrocious mess. Oh, the other 5 out of 5 was Penguin, Pain, and Prejudice. How could I forget? Um, with the exception of Superboy, which just wasn't good at all, uh, this was, on a whole, a very good week. A lot of 5s out of 5s. I don't throw 5 out of 5s out there like, eh, eh, oh, hey, look at me. I'm going to give this a 5 out of 5. I'll give this. No, you have to really impress me to get a 5 out of 5. And these comics gave me a 5 out of 5. Uh, the three comics that stood out the most were, as I just said, let me just pull them out so you can see. <laughs> Penguin Pain and Prejudice, Demonites, and... Batman Robin. These three comics are the comics that really stood out the most to me and the ones that I enjoyed the most. Um, however, if I had to pick from one of them, I would have to... Uh, it is tough because they're all really good. I would have to give it to Batman Robin issue number six. Uh, the reason for this is just the Damien stuff is really, really well done. Um, if you haven't read this issue yet, I don't want to spoil anything, but uh, some of the stuff Damien says at the end or how he goes about doing things in this issue, beautifully done. Very nice. Uh, Batman Robin really is turning out to be actually the second best of the Batman comics in the New 52. Uh, the other one being uh, Batman. But uh, this is a great issue, definitely something worth picking up. And if you haven't picked up any of Batman Robin, go back and pick up the first six issues, uh, which this is part of. Um, you will be enjoying them. As for news and updates, uh, apparently Scott Snyder is going to be writing Mr. Freeze in Batman Annual Number 1, and he's going to be tying in Mr. Freeze to the uh, Night of the Owl storyline in some which way. Uh, so it's interesting to see that we're going to have Mr. Freeze in the new DCU, and we're in uh, I'm kind of interested to see how Scott Snyder does his take on Mr. Freeze. Uh, but apparently it's going to have something tied in with the Court of Owls. Uh, there's a bit of an artist uh, shift on DC, and I'm going to try to get these artists' names the best I can. Uh, the artist from Animal Man is going to be leaving, and Steve Pung is going to be uh, jumping on to uh, Animal Man, and he's apparently worked on Animal Man back in the 90s. Then we also see Resurrection Man uh, getting a new artist, Jesus Sazi. I hope I pronounced that right, uh, which I find is funny uh, because he, I believe, is on Birds of Prey. But in addition to that, wasn't uh, isn't Resurrection Man one of the comics getting canceled? Just wondering. I, I, I'm not sure, but just wondering. Uh, so we're going to get that, and then um, the current artist on Resurrect uh, Resurrection Man, uh, Fernando Di, uh, Di Nino, 
again, if I'm butchering your name, I'm sorry, I'm horrible pronunciation, it's going to be stepping on to Suicide Squad. So there's a bit of a uh, change here on the uh, DC artistry, at least with some of the comics. So that should be interesting. Um, with If Resurrection Man is getting canceled, and I thought it was getting canceled, if it's getting canceled, then... Uh, I would like to see Resurrection Man jump onto the Justice League Dark. I thought that would be interesting. Uh, they said that all the comics getting canceled, they're going to jump onto some other comics in some way. For example, I believe I read in the back, it, you know, you sh guys should really read the back of this stuff because they have some editorial things that they talk about. And I believe one of them was uh, OMAC is going to be jumping on Justice League International. Interesting. Um... So, that's just to show how the characters are going to jump over. I'm sure Men of War and Blackhawks are going to be jumping on uh, the new war comic. I forget what it's called. Uh, G.I. Combat. And then I, I would like to see Static jump on to Teen Titans. That would be a nice fit for him. A really nice fit for him because he did well in the Teen Titans beforehand. Uh, so, it would be interesting if Resurrect uh, Resurrection Man jumped on to Justice League Dark. Uh, the next of the DC Universe Presents is going to be the Challenges of the Unknown, uh, which kind of spurs a bit of an interest for me because I like the Challenges of the Unknown. It is the most blatant sci-fi comic-y kind of comic that can be. It's just a complete adventure, and I, I kind of want to pick that up. It'll be fun. Um, I am going to tell you guys that I've been actually picking up uh, the past five, uh, four issues of... Uh, Firestorm, the Fury Firestorm. I got issue number one when it first came out, but I kind of said, eh, but then I've been picking up the other issues, and I, um, I've been getting some interesting results from it, so maybe I might review the first five issues of that, along with uh, reviewing the uh, first five issues of Blackhawks and the first six issues of Static. So we'll see what goes down with that. Um, I also picked up on, I believe, Tuesday, uh, Resur Resident Evil Revelations, and I beat it on Wednesday. Or was it Monday that I picked it up? Forget what day I picked it up, but I, I think it only took me two days to beat. Um, I was going to do a review on this, but I might as well talk about it real quickly here. Uh, Resident Evil Revelations is a great game. Um... Great graphics, great gameplay, and it tries to bring the horror, survival horror aspect of Resident Evil and blend it into the um, more action-based aspect of Resident Evil that they've been trying to go for. Um, it doesn't do it quite as well as I want to say Resident Evil 4 did, but it does a fairly good job. Uh, the story is the story is Resident Evil. It's not going to be an overly amazing story. Resident Evil is more about the atmosphere, the gameplay, and the characters than anything else. The story is actually secondary, which is kind of unique when it comes down to any kind of fictional medium. Uh, the only complaint I can say about Revelations is it's a very quick game. Um, in that is broken up into episodes, or I'll just say chapters. And um, each chapter will take you between 30 to 40 minutes depending on how good of a Resident Evil player you are. Um, and I went through the chapters in about 30 to 40 minutes, so if you think about it, it took me around 6 hours to beat the game, which is actually pretty quick for any kind of game, because usually with any, um, with most games, you go for a 15 hour to, I want to say 25 hour for an average game. With this, uh, again, I beat it in about 6 hours. So it's actually a fairly quick game. But it is an absolute fun game. Uh, they really did a good job, and this is really what the 3DS is about. It, it can deliver some great graphics, great gameplay. Uh, Resident Evil Revelations, really nice. I don't know if I would call it my favorite on the 3DS. I think Mario 3D Land is still my favorite on the 3DS. But uh, this was definitely a great game and much worth picking up. So definitely something good. Um, anything else? Oh, you guys want to hear a story? You want to hear a story about how I got scammed? Yes. Um, as you guys know, I have graduated college. And I am currently looking for a post-college job. It's not easy, but I'm looking. I have some time before everyone else graduates. And I've been, you know, going to Headhunters. I'm going to be going to a job fair. I need to actually take that day off from my current work. But I'm going to be going to a job fair. I'm going to, I've am going i been uh, going on quite a few interviews. And um, so there was this uh, place that I went to. And they, it was called linked dash 
in marketing, not to be confused with LinkedIn, the online business social network, okay? Um, I thought it was shady at first, but I went to the first interview. Uh, what he told me about the company was pretty promising. Still felt a little shady, but what he told me about the company was kind of promising, and uh, they wanted me back for a second interview. So I said, okay, you know what, at the very least, I need to get my feet dirty. I need to at least put myself out there and see what there is available. If I stumble and fall, then I pick myself back up. Um, I'm a firm believer that, you know, you learn more from your mistakes than you do from your successes. So if something doesn't come from this, then I learn from it and I move on. Uh, take whatever you can from anything. So anyway, so the second interview was a shadowing interview. And let me tell you guys what I applied for. I applied for a management uh, training program. Basically what would happen is I would go into the program and they would train me to be in a, a, a manager of some sort. Um, I would have to do marketing stuff here and there, which I, uh, I'm not the biggest marketing person, but I would have to do marketing stuff here and there, but it was basically a management program. And in the job description, and I applied for this on Career Builder, I use Career Builder, Indeed, and Monster. I'm going to try to use some others, but uh, they said, no travel, no door-to-door, -door, no outside venues, strictly cubicle, uh, in, like indoor stuff. Um, which is fine because I do not want to do door-to-door -door stuff. I did not go to college for that. That is not what I want to do. So I went to the place for my second interview. It's a shadowing interview. It was going to be from 9.15 to, uh, in the morning to 5.30. It's quite a bit for an interview that I'm not getting compensated for. But I said, you know, i got to get my feet dirty somehow. Got to do it. So I went into it, and again, it said all that stuff. No traveling, no door-to-doors, no outdoor venue selling, and all that stuff. So we go to it, and I'm, I'm paired up with a manager, and the, the manager's barely older than me, which kind of um, kind of worried me, but I said, you know, I'm going to keep on giving this a chance. And uh, he, we went downstairs, and he said, listen, I just got to go see my boss at a site. Uh, come with me so that you can shadow me. I'm like... Oh, okay. We get into his car. Guess what we did for eight hours? Door-to-door -door stuff. Ugh. Totally tricked me. And you know what? I knew something was shady, and I should have got out of it, but I couldn't leave because it was in his car, too. I couldn't. It's not like I could drive away. So for eight hours, we went to every single small business, and it was just atrocious. We got yelled at at people to leave. I felt like one of those, you know, when people go door to door to you and you just don't want to deal with them. I had to deal with that. And it was the most shameful thing I had to go through. It was atrocious. And afterwards, he's like, whoa, you know, we're thinking about taking you back for third interview. And I'm like, I'm sorry, but I do not want any piece of this. And it was, it was rough. Um, what do I learn from it? Uh, the first, well, this isn't the first time I've stumbled and fall. The first time I stumbled and fell when it came down to job interviews, I learned to research my places better. What did I learn from this? Well, research it even more. I mean, I researched this place, I heard some good things about it, but apparently not enough good things. So, uh, the moral of the story, people, is be careful. Uh, hopefully I can find a job sometime soon. I'm still looking. I, I mean, I had my uh, job that I had during college to kind of fall back on, but I'm engaged. I want to move out. I want to have a career. I want to get married. So uh, the pressure is on. It's it's tough. I've been putting, uh, I like to think, 150% in. I spent all day yesterday, even though that I was so stressed from Wednesday, I spent all day yesterday just sitting down, getting my resume, getting my references up, emailing some of my former professors to get references from them, just to get everything um, nice and pretty, and then I had to go email a headhunter, and today, I'm going to do some job searching, and then I have to go to work um, at 2. I have a weird shift today. So anyways, I have to go to work at 2, and it's just so much stuff to do. So yeah, that was my crazy Wednesday. You know what was the hardest thing about it? I didn't get my comics until 6 o'clock at night. Ugh. At least when I got home, I had something to fall back on. I had something to kind of cheer me up. But yeah, that's that's basically what the... <laughs> that's basically what the job search was like. A, a random story. You guys are probably bored by it, but... 
Uh, yes, that happened. Um, anything else going down? Um, not much I can think of. What am I doing for games right now? I might as well give you guys a games update. Um, I think I told you guys this beforehand, but I went to a game store last Friday. I'm pretty sure I told you this. I got Metroid. Uh, Super Metroid, and I mean, I got Super Metroid, and I got Metroid 2: The Return of Samus. So I'm gonna, I'm playing those, but I'm playing those with my buddy. I'm right now doing Super Mario Sunshine. If anyone could tell me how many, uh, I, how many stars I need or how many shines I need, please let me know. I'm at like, uh, 38, 39. I just beat that uh, shell one when you have to go in the shell. Oh, it was, it was bad. It was bad. But um, I've been playing some Super Mario Sunshine. Now that I'm done with Resident Evil Revelations, which was really quick, um, I'm going to move back to playing a little bit of uh, some Pokemon. And then I'm going to try to pick up Metroid Prime Hunters or get Super uh, get Mario and Luigi's Bowser's Inside Story, which I know is at uh, my video game store, so I might go check it out actually right after this video, see if they have it. Uh, so I'm going to do that, and uh, anything else going to be going down. Uh, that's basically what I'm doing for video games. Uh, I can't tell you guys how pumped I am for the Wii U. I cannot tell you guys how pumped I am for the Wii U. And uh, I was actually reading online last night that Suter51, who did uh, No More Heroes and No More Heroes 2, some of my favorite Wii games, is planning on doing No More Heroes 3 on the Wii U. And I'm quite interested to see what goes on with that. Um, Valentine's Day is coming up, people. Valentine's Day is coming up. Uh, this is the first Valentine's Day that uh, me and my fi uh, fiance are going to be celebrating as an engaged couple. Uh, because we got engaged back in uh, January, this is the first time that we're going to be celebrating it together. Uh, money's a little tight, so we'll probably do something low-key, but what I'm basically saying is this. There's two things when it comes down to Valentine's Day. Actually, three things that I have advice for you guys when it comes down to Valentine's Day. Number one is that if you do not have a significant other, don't worry about it. It's just another day, okay? In saying that, I'm going to pretty much contradict myself, but it's just another day. It's nothing to worry about. Number two, if you do have a significant other, though, take that significant other and make a great day out of it because for those who do have someone in their life, it can be a fantastic day. But for those who do not have someone in their life, don't worry about it because it's not a big deal. It really isn't. Every day should be Valentine's Day, to be serious. Uh, number three is what I always recommend to people is celebrate Valentine's Day a few days later. Why? Uh, it's Valentine's Day. It really shouldn't matter what day you guys celebrate your love for each other. So if you're going to do it, do it when all the prices are marked down half off when everything's not crowded. You go out to eat on Valentine's Day, do you know how crowded it's going to be? You're going to go buy chocolate before Valentine's Day, do you know how much that stuff is? After Valentine's Day, everything goes to like 70% off. It is crazy. The day after. I mean, I've been talking to my fiance and I said to her, you know, we'll celebrate Valentine's Day, but do you want to do it either before or after? Because it falls on a Tuesday. I'm going to be working, um, and I won't get out until 9. Why don't we just set it for another day? And that's what we usually do. So I don't know quite yet what we're going to do, but we'll figure it out. And, yeah, that's the, that's the secret of Valentine's Day. One, if you don't have anyone, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. Go pick up a comic. Go play a video game. And if you're young, if you're like 14 to 18 and you're worried about having someone, don't. Don't. Don't worry. Two is if you do have someone, treat that person and have that per and hopefully that person can treat you. Um, you know, just have a good time. That's what's important. Um, and it's a day of love. It shouldn't matter what day it's on. So if you guys celebrate it a little later, that's okay. If you celebrate it a little earlier, that's okay. Which comes to the third one. Try to celebrate it a little later so that you don't have to deal with the crowds and everything is um, less expensive. And I probably would think traffic would pretty be pretty bad too because everyone's going to be going out. So, yes, that's the Valentine's Day stuff. Uh, anything else? Not really. Uh, nothing off the top of my head. Um, that's about all I have to say today. I have to work today, and then I have to do more job searching tomorrow and stuff like that. But um, I'll try to post up some more videos. I do have uh, another what I am thinking. Thinking right now. Uh, but, yeah. 
that's all I have to say today. So, a uh, really good week in DC Comics. Really bad week when it comes down to me for interviews. Um, but really good week when it comes down to video games. So, uh, I'm going to end this video here. This is Andrew saying, peace out for now. Okay, we're not quite done yet. A little fake out. Uh, there's some stuff I want to show you real quick, and if I don't show you in this video, then I'm going to completely forget. There's some pictures of me. Um, I was, as you guys know, my grandmother passed away about two weeks ago, and so my father was going through our albums to pick out some pictures to put around the house and such. Um, and, uh, well, in those pictures, we found some old pictures of me when I was younger. Uh, so I want to show this to you guys. Uh, first and foremost, this was, I think, taken in Disney. But this is me with uh, Donatello. So there is Donna, well, there's Donatello and there is me as a young lad. Look at that fanny pack. Oh my god. That is Fergie-licious. Uh, yeah, so back in the day, uh, Donatello when I was a kid was my favorite Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, but as an adult, my favorite is Leonardo uh, for multiple reasons, but for some reason, I really liked Donatello when I was a kid. Um, here's me on Halloween dressed up as Raphael from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I just like how I'm looking over my shoulder, also badass. Uh, and look at that shell. That is awesome. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have the size to go with it, but uh, I really like this picture. Uh, my fiance took a small version of the picture, and she's keeping it at her house now. Um, then, uh, I guess we're in a turtle theme. This is a picture of me that was drawn by someone as Donatello. <laughs> oh, my. Apparently on my birthday. I remember it being done, but not on my birthday. And then last of these pictures is we have a cottage of sorts up in New Hampshire. And I haven't gone up there in years because I've just been so busy. But we used to go up there for the summer and we used to go up there for the winter for skiing. I love skiing. I need to get back into skiing. My fiance doesn't know how to ski. That kind of hurts me. But uh, this is me. Uh, what The thing is, is when I was growing up, I dressed up a lot. I have a lot of... My mother called them identities. I would dress up as Batman. I would dress up as Darkwing Duck. I would dress up as Superman. I would dress up as a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. But one of the things I did the most is I always liked to pretend I had swords. And I would actually take Whittle Ball Bats and stick them in the back of my pants. And pretend that I'm actually holstering my sword. <laughs> Isn't that great? Look at that. What a cheese ball I am. Oh my. And there's one thing else I want to show you guys because this was actually pretty important to me. One sec. Um, as I said, my grandmother passed away a few weeks ago, and thank you everyone for their best wishes about that. Um, but there's two things that I got to keep from my grandmother that uh, I didn't want much. But there are a few things that I wanted to definitely remember me by, uh, remember her by. And one of them, one of the very touching things, I got to keep her black belt. Um, I'm a third generation martial artist. I'm a fourth degree black belt. My father's a fourth degree black belt. My grandmother was a second degree. And for me to keep her black belt was a pretty important thing. But uh, there's a picture that she had throughout uh, the years that I've lived in. I've always seen this picture. She must have got it before I was born. Um, and it's always stood out in my mind. And I, I wouldn't say it's necessarily a picture that I particularly find, I don't know, uh, aesthetically appealing. But there's just something about it. I guess it's, uh, it, it just, it, it's an eye catcher. That's the thing. And I've always saw it as something that I always remembered uh, from her house. And uh, when I would go visit her every week at the nursing home, uh, something at the nursing home. And this is the picture right here. And basically, I what is this? A water paint, I believe it's called. Uh, I'm not big into paint, painting, so I'm not quite sure. But basically, this is a picture of a river or a pond of some sort on fire. And you see the tree branches out up here. And it's just kind of blanketed in red. And, uh, yeah, this always stood out to me, and I, I don't know why. She called it the river, the river of hell, I think. Uh, she got it in Chile, I believe. And it just always stood out to me, and I, I, I don't, I, I guess it is beautiful, but uh, there's just, I don't know what it is that stood out to me. And it's just something I always remembered her by, and it's something I wanted to share with you guys today because, um, I guess for me it, it reminds me of it, if I get any meaning from it because I guess from paintings and art you get meaning, your own interpretation, and for me I get the interpretation that this is 
trial and tribulation. You have to go through the fires and you have to go through hell in order to find your happiness, to find success. Um, whether the whatever that hell or trial and tribulations for, may be, I've had a lot of trial and tribulations. I've had a lot of challenges I had to overcome. And when I mean a lot of challenges, I mean a lot. I could go in for days about all the stuff that I had to go through. Um, and that kind of always stood out to me. And it's something I can remember my grandmother by. So that's just something I wanted to share for you guys. Um, not to get all touchy-feely, but it's uh, something I wanted to share. And, of course, uh, the pictures, especially this one. Because I have to be rocking that wiffle bat. Uh, God, I should have the fanny pack in that one too. But yeah, so anyways, this is the real peace out for now.